This is Michelle Elliott. It is my honor to be your host this year for the 2022 Black History Month presentation on behalf of the Etowah Valley Historical Society and the African American History Initiative. And it is our desire this year to bring honor to the men and women who've served in the military, especially to those men and women of color. And we have some very special interviews that we'd like to share with you today. But first, did you know we have some amazing veterans memorials that are available for you to see right here in downtown Cartersville. So the bell is ringing. So come on, everybody. Let's go check them out. This first memorial, sponsored by Bartow County, it honors veterans who fought in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam War, and Afghanistan. This second memorial, sponsored by the Magnolia Garden Club of Bartow County. It is called the Blue Star Memorial. It honors all veterans who've served in the military. This third memorial, which we affectionately call the Walk of Honor, is sponsored by the Vietnam veterans, the Veterans of Foreign Affairs, the American Legion, and the Ladies Auxiliary of the American Legion. And did you know? that you can purchase a brick in honor of a friend, family member, someone in the community that you know at a very affordable cost by going over to the Olin Tatum building in downtown Cartersville. They make it very affordable for you to be able to honor a family member who served in the military. And now, let's get ready for some very special interviews from some men in the military that you just may know. As promised, we have some very special interviews we'd like to share with you today. And the very special guest I have in, uh, in, in with us at first is my dad, Herschel Elliott. So, hi dad, how are you doing? How are you doing today? <laughs> first of all, tell us now, what year were you born? Can we share that secret with the world? No, no, I don't think I'm gonna share that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and tell us anyway. Tell the truth, tell the 49. truth. 
And I don't know how I'm going to support them, but I'm going to do my part. I'm uh, really going to do my part. And that, you know, and that is my uncle Robert, Robert Elliott Jr. So we're going to we're going to have that interview with him in just a moment. So y'all stay tuned for that. But you you and, and I and what I remember about you growing up, you were that brother that if somebody in the family got hurt, you were the one they were like, call Herschel. You know, your brother, you know, my other aunt, so whenever they got in a fight or something happened, they were like, I'm going to call, I'm going to call Herschel. Because, so you you were that dude that wanted to come and, and you know, and and take somebody with. out if anybody was messing with your brothers and sisters. Is that right? Right, right. <laughs> call me the Hercules. They call me Hercules. They yes. come and sit it straight. They come and sit it right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. you wanted to do that for Uncle Robert yeah. when you knew that he'd been hit with some strap dogs. Well, back in them days, Jack nice. Claw, Van Dam, and Annie Swash, they didn't have nothing on the hurt. They didn't have nothing on you. That's didn't right. They didn't have nothing on me. That's all right. that being stuff. I <laughs> lost all that hurt. I believe though. it. So, where, where were you trained, though, when you? Uh, well, actually, actually, I wasn't. It's just the way I grew up, grew up on the farm. Mm -hmm. And um, they used uh, to play around with the cows and horses and stuff and everything. And, Running them plows and stuff and whatnot, and eating them beans as usual. Do a lot of farm work. Get you ready. Yeah, get you eating ready. Eating a lot of bread. But when and then I play football, in which yeah. I just did a lot of training off, and then mm -hmm. running full back, half back, middle mm -hmm. line back, and just stuff like that. Just kept football. me, in, just and kept me in training. Play, play, play football in high school, right, right. Because you were, you were great, great, and I and I appreciate learning that about you because. You were one of those males that were very physically. I mean, physically, they they took you right away. You know, because right. you were in the branch of service. You were in the army. Mm -hmm. And but you were. Where did you train when you when you got enlisted? Though, where did you? Well, go? I thought we went to Fort Jackson first, and uh, then in uh, Missouri, and I thought I went straight to uh, California. Small town boy out of Kingston, Georgia. Now this <laughs> is your chance. To start seeing the world, yeah, Mississippi, <laughs> right, okay, right. and then from from Kingston to Mississippi to California, right? And oh, so, St. Louis, Missouri, St. and even St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And so, but now, wow, what was it like being in California? That was a whole different experience. Even yeah. other cultures, yeah. other races. What was that experience? Oh, like that was, for you? Oh, California was mostly everybody would say everybody. It was no different from nobody. Uh, didn't know color. You wouldn't see much racism off in California at all. You could just about dress like you want to and just about do what you want to. And it just sounded like it was going to sink to me. I had to get out and knock that over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, now that, that's Don't a beautiful leave, thing but. to hear because that was a very volatile time in American history, the mm -hmm. late 1960s, early 70s. A lot was going on. But, but your experience was such that you didn't experience the di discrimination or racism, no. not, in your, not in your camp. Not in the camp, no. Mm -hmm. Not at all. You all supported each other, like you had to just right. do your job. Right, you had to do a job, watch each other back, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uncle Robert, it is so good to have you here, sir. Just born to Mama Eileen up in Kingston, Georgia. Up in Kingston, Georgia. Brother to my dad, Herschel Elliott. So we're gonna hear from you and ask you a few questions as well about your military experience. <laughs> you doing all right today? Doing fine, <laughs> I tell, When were you born? Let's start with that. Are you gonna tell us your, your, like, your real age? Yes, Go ahead I and tell am. Us. Uh -huh. Thank God I'm there. I live to be 76. I was born 19 October, October 9th, 1945. October. And, so, and when did you enlist? In the, when did you enlist in the Army? We didn't enlist, well, I was in that draft team. And so they didn't draft it. So being drafted, they gave me a choice. And my choice was when they told me the different branches of service and was in, 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 to escape the infantry, I had joined the Navy. Oh, okay. So, so you mean, wait a minute, you mean to escape the Army infantry? Yeah, to escape the Army infantry, I, I joined the Navy. That's so what you did. So we had did. a choice. Okay, you joined yes. the Navy. Okay. Yes, the Navy Corps, and really we got the Navy Corps as well. And so the choice was I joined the Navy because then that was. I was going to be on a ship three meals a day in state, and so therefore it was rather than going to uh, come back. Oh. So that's what I chose, uh, but that didn't happen. And of course, we got when the family military found it's not what I choose, what Uncle Sam needs are. And again, so what they do is want to test and find out where you best fit in. So when they tested me, I fit in two areas. First of all, personnel, 
and just lost my compassion. And that would help folks also. They figure out to be a good court. And so a good medic. So they sell for the choice was they needed medics in the field. So they chose me to be a medic, a hospital corpsman. And that's so I could, they could transfer me from the Navy and to serve so the Navy and plus the Marine Corps as a Marine Corps medic. And then, of course, I wound up in infantry anyway. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm doing part of the Army Infantry anyway. Yes, so I think that's which is really cool. Okay. Uh, 84 Medical School. But again, school. that was that was your. Yeah, yeah, you tell us the year because you. you because I heard you say you were. This, this was you doing this this as a volunteer as well. You were not drafted. This I was, was. We're first drafted. So, being drafted, we had a choice. Even though you were drafted. The, oh, yeah, you had when we get choice. to the thing, we had a choice. Okay. Either we accept what we're going to give you. Or we give you a choice, but they all needed personnel at that time, whether you were the Air Force or Navy. So they gave you a choice gotcha. of which one you want to serve. Gotcha. And then that was your stable draft. So either way, you was going to, if you didn't choose, you were going to the Army or Marine Corps. Wow. And so we had to make a choice of which one we thought was best to get us. Uh, and so that's what that's what we got to the Navy. Oh, wow. So we made that choice for the Navy because of the fact that the guy said three meals a day, you want to eat no well. combat, I can't blame you ain't on the ship. That's right. So, right. so you ain't got to worry about being blown up every day. <laughs> right. So we chose the Navy. That's right. And, yeah. what, and tell us again, what, what years was, was that? What year was that when you were? Well, first of all, I, first of all, from Kingston, Georgia, uh, I, I left Kingston, Georgia, uh, which I did, was with the veteran of myself, and so went to John Corps. We joined Corps, of course, always our idea. Since we was the oldest folks in the family, uh, my, my, me and my brothers and sisters for me was sending back some money so my parents could get the rest of the trip to school or they would just get out of uh, sister college, in college. And so, but that was our idea to leave and get a better job. Uh, and of course, when I got in the Job Corps, with Charles was once we did our task there, they also came through again, uh, the, uh, again the draft team. So coming from Carnival and the draft so you got a report. So I had to report from Indiana. So I joined the uh, Navy from Indiana. So I went, went over there and joined the Navy. So that was in 1967, uh, March. And then in 1967, I went to a job, went to a, a, a medical a training, field medical training in Camp, Camp June. And then I uh, went to a hospital corps in, in uh, Great Lakes. And then I went to a certain hospital there in, in, in in Maine, in Kerry, Maine, and then of course I went to California, uh, Camp Pendleton, where they, they taught me the uh, field medical, for, especially for Vietnam. And so then I transferred this December 67, uh, transferred there to Vietnam. And so in Vietnam, uh, I was there for not a whole year, but it was, I was assigned a whole year because I got wounded and got blown up in the uh, leaving my six months, I was supposed to come out of the field. So everybody cool was supposed to go and serve six months in the field, uh, and come back, and then serve six months back in the, the duty compound, uh, where it was kind of safe, but not really wow. safe. So there you were in 67 being deployed into Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. and then you have that, tell us about that, go back and tell us again about what happened with that experience of stepping on the on the minefield. Well, when, that's a, and what it was like for you being there in Vietnam. Well, in Vietnam it was like to me, it was, you know, a war is hell, and, and of course, it was, I think it was talking, uh, one that uh, I didn't want to go to war, and all my papers that give you a dream sheet, and mm -hmm. choose where you want to go, and never to a war zone, I know brothers said he wanted to go to a war zone, <laughs> but if anybody had put that on their papers, was going to go to Vietnam just to kill the murder, they did not choose those folks, wow. because of the fact a uh, war is designed not to go and destroy the nation, but to make them defenseless so they ever cease, they, they not fight war, not want to fight anymore, but want to surrender so they have peace. But that's the all good, not going to destroy and kill them, but going to fall to make them lose all resistance to want to fight. And that's the whole war. So they weren't going to pick my dad anyway yeah, because so he yeah, was going he there had, to help you. If he had that on his record, that would all back you wouldn't get to go if they okay. thought that. Okay. So again, so but anyway, because I was against it, they knew that I was a good candidate because I was going to go trying to kill. They knew I was going to think, and of course, we all of everybody go to war zone. Uh, they teach us you're an ambassador. So an ambassador for the government, so you have to make peace. So the government is trying to make peace while we fighting the war, and just like they do it now, they're trying to talk peace, and that's the whole thing. We're going to war, 
they they are trying to make peace and they want a peace solution, but they realize somebody has to fight sometimes because that other enemy is not going to give up. And that uh, that is such revelation for this generation to know that even that that is the mindset of your superiors that you are ambassadors you are. for the United States and your primary focus is to make peace on behalf of the United States, not to go just beat up somebody. Right.